Welcome along to this second video in the quadratic series for P1 Maths. In this video we're going to be dealing with quadratic graphs. So here's the graph of y equals x squared, the most simple kind of quadratic graph you can look at. Um, notice the shape of the graph, uh, this kind of u-shape. So you're going to have to get used to drawing this shape and getting it approximately right. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, knowing the approximate shape of the graph is, is helpful. Okay, so y equals x squared. So take any x value and square it, gives you the y value. So 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, minus 2 squared, minus 2 times minus 2 is positive 4, etc. So if you join up all the points, you get this red graph here. So what we're going to do now is just change uh, the graph a little bit, change the equation a little bit, and look at what happens to the graph. Okay, in particular, we're interested in that completing the square form, or completed the square form, that we talked about in the last uh, video. So let's have a look. So let's look at the graph of y equals x minus 1 all squared. Okay, so it looks like this. We've subtracted 1 off the x and then squared. You might want to have a think about what you think might happen when we draw that graph. So let's have a go at it now. So there it is there. So we've got our original graph in grey. Here's the blue one here. x minus 1 squared. You can see that it's moved one unit to the right. Not to the left, but to the right. So that's x minus 1 squared. Here's x minus 2 squared, x minus 3 squared, x minus 4 squared, etc. Okay, so we're back to x squared. Now what do you think would happen if we had x plus 1 squared? So in the equation, if I just change that to plus 1 squared, so that's the one I'm going to graph now. Okay, that's what we'll get. x plus 2 squared, x plus 3 squared, x plus 4 squared, etc. Okay, so you can see that subtracting or adding a number onto the x before you square it moves the graph left and right. So let's look now at what happens when we add 1 after we square the x. So we've got the equation y equals x squared plus 1. Now, here's what happens when we do that. You might want to have a guess first. That's what we get. Okay, so there's x squared plus 1, the blue graph, x squared plus 2 x squared plus 3, etc. You can see what's happening is the graph is being shifted up. There's x squared plus 6, etc. Okay. There's back to x squared again. And then we could go x squared minus 1, if you wanted. There we go. There's x squared minus 1, shifted down 1, x squared minus 2, x squared minus 3, x squared minus 4. So you can see the vertex has just shifted down that number of units. Let's put those two ideas together now and draw this graph, x plus 3 squared minus 1. So if we understand what we did before, we know that this means that we're going to shift the graph 3 units to the left. Okay, kind of think opposites, plus 3 means 3 units to the left, and the minus 1 means down 1. Okay, so let's do that. So 3 units to the left takes us to there, and then we want to go down 1. So there's the graph of y equals x plus 3 squared minus 1. And you can see it has the same shape as your basic y equals x squared graph. Shifted to the left 3 and down 1. Next one, x minus 2 squared plus 3. So once again, minus 2 squared means that means we're going to go to the right 2 and the plus 3 means we're going to go up 3. Okay, to the right 2 and up 3. So let's do that one the right 2 and then the plus 3 on the end means we're going to move up 3. So there's the graph of y equals x minus 2 all squared plus 3. If you want to work out something like where is this graph going through the y-axis, you can see it's going through 7 on this one here because we've got a nice graphing program. The way that you could do that is look at the equation and you know that where a graph is going through the y-axis, the x value is 0. Okay, So for this blue graph here, the y-intercept is going to be when the x value is 0. So if we just substitute 0 into the equation, we'll get the y-intercept. So 0 minus 2 is minus 2. Minus 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. So if you want to get these a little more accurate, you can do that. Substitute 0 into the equation. That will tell you what the y-intercept is. Okay, let's look now at what happens when we put a different number in front of the x squared. 
So here let's look at y equals 2x squared and then we can look at y equals a half x squared. So let me show you how that works. So here we've got y equals x squared. Now I'm just going to increase the number in front of the x by 0.1 each time. So here we're up to y equals 2x squared now. You can see what's happening to the graph, it's just getting skinnier. If we keep going along here, you can see we get to y equals 3x squared, and I'll just continue it on and on and on. There's y equals 4x squared. So the graph's just getting skinnier and skinnier as we increase the number in front of the x squared. So there's y equals 2x squared. See, I wouldn't say it's like twice as steep. If you like, some people when they draw y equals 2x squared, draw it kind of halfway between this one and this one. Well, it's not that. And if you wanted to get it accurately, you could. For example, take um, when x equals 2, 2 times 2 squared, 2 times 4 is 8. So when x equals 2, it's going to be going through 8 rather than 4. So you can get these accurately, but we're just drawing a sketch for now. Okay, so we're going back to y equals x squared. So you can imagine what's happening if we go the other way now. There's 0.9x squared. We get down to there's a half x squared. So you can see the graph is just getting shallower or wider. There's y equals 0.1x squared. Okay, so if you want, we could go even lower than that. Okay, and finally when we get to 0x squared, that's just y equals 0. Okay. So you need to know that the number in front of the x squared just, just changes the width of the graph, whether it's uh, wider or whether it's skinnier. Okay. Another thing to note here is what happens when the value of a becomes negative. So if I go back to my equation now, if I want to draw something like negative 2x squared, Okay, so we know the 2 makes the graph skinnier, but what happens when we have a negative in front of the x squared? Okay, let's look at that now. So here's y equals a half x squared, that's 0x squared, here's negative a half, here's negative x squared. So you can see the graph just flips upside down. There's negative 2x squared, negative 3x squared, negative 4x squared. So you can still see the same kind of idea, it's getting skinnier, but when there's a negative in front of the x squared term, it means the graph is upside down. Last one here is a combination of all of these, negative 2, x minus 3 squared plus 1. Okay, so let's go through each transformation one at a time here and have a look at it and work out what this is going to look like. Okay, um, I'm going to start with the x minus 3 squared bit because we know that that bit there means that we're going to move to the right 3. Okay, so let's do that one first. And this is the way that I draw it. So I think in my mind, okay, that's x minus 3 squared. Good, right, we've got that bit there. Now, the plus 1 means that we've got to add 1 onto everything, so the graph's going to be moved up 1. So let's change that one there now. So there we go, there's x minus 3 squared plus 1. And now, the minus 2 out the front here. Okay, the negative means it's going to be flipped upside down. The 2 means it's going to be skinnier than usual. So let's do that now. So a equals 1 at the moment. So when we, there's a 1 in front of the x squared, if you like, at the moment. So we want to have it so it's minus 2. So there you go. So it's flipped upside down and it's skinnier than the usual graph. Just a few quick graphs now of looking at quadratics when they're in factorized form. Uh, factorizing a quadratic, we end up with something like this. So x minus 3, x plus 1. If we want to draw the graph of this, the easiest way is to just look at, well, what are the values of x that make each of these brackets 0? They're going to be the x-intercepts where the graph goes through the x-axis. So you can see that 3 and negative 1 are going to be the x-intercepts, the values of x that make each bracket 0. So you can see the graph is going through 3 and minus 1. The center of the graph, if you like, is halfway between those two. So that's going to be x equals 1. And if you want to find exactly what this point is down here, the vertex, then all you do is substitute x equals 1 into this equation here. Okay, so if I do that, put 1 in there for x and 1 in there for x, you can see I get 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And we're going to times that by 1 plus 1, which is positive 2. 
negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. So you can see that gives you the bottom part here of the vertex. Last one is this equation here, 1 minus x, 2x plus 1. So same deal, we're going to look at the x-intercepts. So the first bracket is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. So it's going through 1. The second bracket is equal to 0, a little bit trickier, when x equals negative a half. Now the shortcut for that is, if you want to know the value of x, each bracket 0, I just go this number divided by this number and the opposite of this sign. So I'll say that again, it's the number on the end divided by the number in front of the x, the opposite of the sign here. So in this case, negative a half. See, that's the other x-intercept. Now, if you expand this out, you're going to get a negative x squared, a negative 2x squared, in fact. So that means it's going to be upside down and skinnier than usual. Hence, we get the blue graph over here. So here's the summary of what we've been talking about. For a quadratic written in completed the square form, the A changes the shape of the graph, skinnier or wider. The B makes it go left or right, and the C moves it up or down. One of the great advantages of writing a quadratic in this form is we can easily read off the vertex, and this is exactly what the syllabus says we should be able to do. So when we've got a quadratic written in this form and completed the square form, the vertex is just minus bc. So the value of x that makes that bracket 0, and just the value of c sitting there on the end. The a makes no difference to where the vertex is. So if x minus 2 squared plus 3, the vertex is 2, the value of x that makes that 0, and 3. For this one here, the value of x that makes this bracket 0 will be, using the trick, that value divided by that value in the opposite of that sign. So minus 3 over 2 and minus 1 would be the y coordinate. For the last one, the value of x that makes that 0 would be 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, so 4 and 5 would be the vertex.